Hi, this is Cheryl A. Major, and I want to welcome you to this edition of Ask Cheryl Anything. And this is, oh, a few minutes, half hour, 45 minutes, however long we run, where people can email or come online with a Zoom call and ask questions, anything they want relative to health and wellness. So uh, Sue, Sue is with us today, Sue Fleckenstein. Nice to see you, Sue. Good to see your smiling face. Everybody's going to love your accent Thank just you. as much as I do. <laughs> So Sue, any um, questions for us today before we get started with the ones that have been emailed in? Yeah, actually, um, to do with the membership, you send out the links for like the food journal and some other documents. Where do I go back to find them again? I always seem to have trouble where I go in the membership area to go and re-download them or find them again. Oh, this is for the anti-diet solution. Yes. Yes, yes. No, if you know, um, for both. For both, even the Healthy Healthy Eating Club, I think you sent out some stuff too. Yes, yes. If you go to special okay. announcements, um, and, oh, okay, okay, and I will I will make myself a note right now to send you links to those, so that you have those too. I'll send you links okay. to special announcements, so you can just keep that. Okay. okay. Yeah. I mean, unless I am getting the two mixed up, I'm not sure, but. Well, welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to keep them straight sometimes. But Sue's talking about um, a course that she's in, the anti-diet solution, that we're kind of in the middle of. We're in week three of, of six weeks, and then we have also the Healthy Eating Club, and that's kind of an ongoing, um, you know, helping us course correct and find different ways to explore eating so that it works for us for us and for our health rather than against it, uh, which it's so easy to make faux pas these days because um, healthy eating is, is tricky with all of our processed food and the processed food is engineered in a lab to be addictive and that's tough. It lights up the pleasure centers in our brains and we have a good day. We want more because we want to feel good still or we have a bad day and we go for it because we want to not feel bad. So. It's this up and down and up and down, and it's seductive, and they do it on purpose. And um, Sue, this is, you, you've raised a good point, and I want to share something with everybody about how they do this. They, um, they meaning the processed food companies, they bring in, uh, a lot of the time they bring in children because children can tolerate sugar love sugar and can tolerate more sugar than adults can. And what they do is they try to determine the bliss point of sugar. The bliss point of sugar is the point where it's so sweet that anything that has more sugar, just a little more sugar, it's too sweet and it doesn't taste good. That point before it gets too sweet, that is what they call the bliss point of sugar. And they, they test it on kids and they test it yeah, you know, with stuff with, with pudding, for instance, they will give kids a little cup of pudding and they have a little taste. Yeah, that's good. They add more sugar, taste, add more sugar, taste, add more sugar. Ah, it's too sweet. I don't like it. So that point where the pudding tasted really good is the bliss point of sugar. That's where it's really delicious. And Hazel has joined us. Hi, Hazel. Hey, Carol. Good to see you. Glad you could join <laughs> us. We just got rocking and rolling, and I'm talking about the, the bliss point of sugar and the diabolical uh, processed food companies. And we were talking about how they test kids to find out how much sugar they can tolerate. And when they get to where it's before, it, just before it gets to being too, too sweet, that, and it still tastes good to kids, that's the bliss point of sugar and to adults. That's the bliss point of sugar. And what they've discovered is if they add if you get to that point where it's going to be too sweet, if they add more salt, we what? can tolerate more sugar. Yeah. So isn't that, it's evil. They're evil. <laughs> They're so evil. And they've got us. They have so got us. That's why I don't, <clears throat> that's why I don't eat sugar anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I, know. <laughs> I read every food. label. Yeah. You taught me. I read every label. Good girl. <laughs> got to be an avid um, label reader and in the anti-diet solution next week we're going to get into the weeds with the label reading again because if you've heard it from me before you can use a refresher and if you haven't heard it it's eye-opening and it's a deep deep well so you have to be very very careful of, of processed foods now um hazel do you have 
Um, do you have any questions? I have Sue and I were talking about a couple of things and um, going to open it up for any questions you have. And then I have uh, two or three questions that people had emailed people who couldn't be here. So any questions for me? Tell me a way to get thin quicker. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, we didn't gain weight really quickly. People lose perspective of how long we've been eating the way we eat. And to back it off, it takes a while. And the thing that is that we have to be mindful of is when we start any kind of a weight loss, anything, and we use and we lose weight quickly and we lose quite a bit of it. I mean, you can use lose five or seven pounds. But what, they diet, what the diet companies and diet programs don't tell you is that's water weight. When you hit the dreaded plateau, that's when you go, yay, I plateaued. Now I'm getting down to business. Because when you hit that plateau and your weight loss stops, that's when you start to burn the fat. Before that, you're just losing water weight. So they don't have frame the plateau properly. Yes, Hazel. I did find that, uh, and I, it's actually noticeable. Um, I started doing exercise. I mean, I can't do a lot of exercise because of all my, you know, physical conditions, but I started doing silver sneakers. Ah. And they have some really great videos for people over a certain age. And a lot of them are really basic walking yeah but walking in different ways yeah <clears throat> and i noticed the last couple of days i mean i've been doing it now for i think four or five days and i noticed that this part of my body which is my worst part right now is starting to decrease that's wonderful how many uh, there is a question i have to ask you you told me about taking charcoal tablets if I get bloated after a meal. Mm -hmm. Can I only take one? If you read the directions, I, I, I believe the charcoal uh, caps or tabs that I have say um, one or two. Okay, I have you... I have taken two at a time if I'm if I'm really in distress because there's nothing like being bloated to make you feel really miserable. Right. That that gassing okay. up thing is just it's that's awful. the only question I had. Yeah. I was going to email it to you, but there you go. Yeah. No. I I mean I, I generally try to take one because I think that's what they suggest, but you know two. Yeah. If you're really in distress, I would I would go ahead and take two. Okay, but that silver sneakers, their programs are really great. That's great. If it works for you, <clears throat> that's what the important <clears throat> thing is. And, and Hazel knows, because I've talked about it, I, I am naturally sedentary. I am not someone who exercises. And I've, I've been exercising with Kathy, uh, Kathy Hicks, and that's been working for me. So it depends. Whatever works for you that is what you should do as long as we keep moving. I keep saying, I always say, if they, if you keep moving, they can't catch up. <laughs> so, right. Just, you know, the reason I like the, the teachers on silver sneakers is because they're all much more low key. Yeah. Good. And I don't mind, you know, music that is, you know, let's go type music, you know, like, uh, I can't remember any of this, like, I'll survive or whatever it's called. But I can't deal with somebody that is too loud. Yeah. Well, it, as I said, if this works for you, that is super. And it doesn't cost anything. There you go. Even better. My, my favorite price free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So did I answer your your question when we got started? I've, I've been down like 12 rabbit holes since then, and I, I'm not sure that I did. Yes, we did. Yes. Okay, good. All right. Just checking, checking. Because I, I get excited about stuff and I go off on tangents <laughs> and I have to think, what were we talking about? <laughs> Sometimes I get overwhelming and overwhelmed. Um, so I had uh, a question about uh, late night snacking. And uh, somebody said, I have a problem with eating before I go to bed. 
And sometimes I'll try not to eat and then I wake up at midnight and I'm hungry. So I'm a late night snacker, what can I do? So, and this will sound familiar to, uh, to you, Sue and Hazel, this may sound familiar to, to you as well. Um, I, I suggest, no, 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 I know you, I know it's not an issue for you, um, but I suggest to people that if that's an issue for them that they reframe it. And instead of saying, I'm not going to snack, I'm not gonna eat after dinner, reframe it as I'm going to fast. I'm gonna fast for 12 hours. I'm gonna just shut it down and do something positive. So if you finish dinner at seven, if you finish dinner at eight, you fast for 12 hours and you don't start eating again until seven or eight the next morning. It doesn't mean that you're doing 18 hours of fasting and six hours of eating. It just means that you are reframing the, your behavior so that you make what's been a challenge into something positive rather than saying, I don't want to eat or I'm not going to eat. You say, I am going to shut down my eating window for 12 hours. So I think it was Julie who said that, who asked that question. So Julie, give that a shot. And you can always email me, Cheryl at thinstronghealthy.com with any follow-up questions or letting me know if that helps, if that works for you. Um, somebody else, uh, you raised your hand, Hazel. I got into the habit of doing that on another program. <laughs> of raising your hand? Yeah, right. Oh. So that way I don't have to interrupt you. Oh, okay. Go on. Yes. Carry on. Oh, okay. All right. How do I take your hand down? Do you take your hand down? You can't. I'll do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> don't confuse me. I'm tech, tech challenged as it is. So the other question that I have here is from Janet. And Janet said... Uh, which I love chocolate and I can't give it up. Um, I would like to find a healthy chocolate, which chocolate is good for my health. Okay, so Janet, raw chocolate or minimally processed dark chocolate that's high in cocoa solids is what's best. That's better, infinitely better for you than milk chocolate or white chocolate. Milk chocolate is usually only 10 to 30% cocoa. Dark chocolate is it's supposed to be 50% or more. So I'm gonna get into the weeds a little bit here on the chocolate. Again, this, this goes back to the back of the package. And what you need to do is always turn it over and look at the ingredients. Now there's a little trick to figuring out if it's really dark chocolate or how dark it is. Sometimes on the front of the package, they will say 60% cocoa or chocolate, 70%, whatever, 52% they might say on the front. A lot of the times they just say dark chocolate. It doesn't mean that it's really, truly dark chocolate. Dark chocolate has cocoa listed before sugar on the ingredient label. So if you turn it over and you look at the ingredients and the first ingredient is sugar, that means it's less than 50% chocolate or 50% cocoa. That is not necessarily in your best interest to eat. Your best interest for chocolate is to be 70% or greater. Now, there's an exception to that. I know there are people out there who are lovers of milk chocolate, and I, I will never give up trying to talk them into acquiring a taste for dark chocolate. So if you say, if it's not a Hershey milk chocolate bar, I don't wanna know about it. What I would encourage you to do is look for dark chocolate and turn it over to see that sugar is the first ingredient. So that means you will be in the high 40s percent, not quite 50%. And it's easier for you to move from milk chocolate to that kind of dark chocolate. And then when you get used to the way that tastes, move into where it's going to be chocolate first, and maybe it will say 52 or 60% cocoa, and then the sugar will be the second ingredient. It's, it's good for you. Chocolate, chocolate is um, anywhere from, uh, dark chocolate, real dark chocolate is anywhere from 50 to 90% uh, cocoa solids. And um, that's the best kind for you to be eating. It's, it's, it's high in antioxidants. It lights up the pleasure centers in our brain. It makes us feel good. There are a lot of benefits to chocolate, but you wanna make sure that you know, again, knowledge is power, and don't let the marketing fool you. Make sure that you are 
an informed consumer or an informed eater in this case, and that you know what the makeup of your chocolate is. Janet, I hope that helps. And if you are, you didn't mention whether you were a milk chocolate lover or not, but um, if you are, I hope that will help you transition into uh, a version of dark chocolate and then into real dark chocolate because it is good for you and it tastes darn good and it makes us feel good. So, um, so I hope that helps, Janet. Um, that's all I have for questions on, uh, on my email today. Hazel, what you got for me? I wish I could remember. <laughs> <laughs> You well, need more chocolate things, for brain well, health. Oh, I know what I was going to say. You know, when I first started doing intermittent fasting, I had a real big problem because I don't eat. At, dinner for me sometimes doesn't start till 7, 30, 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I realized that I could change the feasting, t the fasting time to start at 9, it... I haven't had a problem with it since. So I go from nine until 11 or 12 the next day. Perfect. And it, it doesn't give me a problem. And then I found accidentally on my phone, this fasting thing, I can't even remember what it's called. And I'd have to bring the phone in here to remember. It actually tells me when to start fasting. Ooh, that's good. It says it's time to start your fast now. <laughs> and so um, that makes a difference too. So I can, yeah. as long as I don't have to start at seven o'clock. No, there's no reason for that. I don't eat any more, you know, late before I go to bed, which is what I used to do, you know, because um, I'm a night bird. So it was nothing for me to eat until 12 o'clock at night. Yikes. Before I went fasting. And as for chocolate, I eat nothing less than 85%. That's awesome. That's awesome. In fact, I can't eat less than 85% because it gives me migraines. Really? I didn't, I discovered That's when so I started eating 85, because, you know, at first it was like 85%, ugh, it doesn't taste <laughs> like anything. Um, and then I realized that I could have chocolate every day and I never got a migraine. That but is so interesting. If I eat milk chocolate, migraine. Even a square, migraine. I get a migraine. Wow. And the only time I ever, ever eat milk chocolate is when I buy my grandson from the English store Cadbury's from England milk chocolate, and I will have one square of his milk chocolate. And do you have a migraine the next day? No. Because I only eat one square. Okay. And it's like once in, he's at college. So yeah. how often does he come home? Yeah. Yeah. That's you know. so interesting. So it must be the, the sugar. I don't know, but chocolate, orange juice, um, the cheese, those are the three big triggers for migraine sufferers. For you? For anybody. I have I have a friend whose um, significant other it's gluten, and if he goes and out gluten. to the pizza, well, I I go with I I don't even say gluten anymore because it's I don't eat gluten so, you yeah. know. But the big triggers always have been chocolate, and it was Orange. always milk chocolate, obviously, yeah. because we didn't really know about dark chocolate until recently. Yeah, recently. Anyway, the last few years. Yep. Um, orange juice. Orange juice. I cannot drink orange juice. Well, you should. As much shouldn't. as I like it. You shouldn't. It, I don't it, anyway. It, so It goes right to your liver and right to fat cells. So it's just not a oh, good Oh, does it? Oh, God, yes. Any kind of fruit juice, because it's processed and because the, the pulp well, and the if fiber. you squeeze it from the orange? No. Same really? thing. Really? Yeah. It goes, it goes, it goes right. Uh, it, I, I'm sorry, I misspoke. It doesn't go right to your liver, but it it's digested very quickly and it's absorbed very quickly. It gives you a huge bump in your glucose level. And unless you are burning it off, it goes to new fat cells. 
And every new fat cell has a blood supply. And as you gain weight and you get new fat cells, your heart has to work to supply those new fat cells with the blood supply that, it, that they require. So- And real could, cheese. Real cheese? Oh, that's a bummer, huh? Real cheese. Yeah. If I eat a slice of that processed stuff, yeah, you're that's okay. nothing, because there's nothing in it. No, I know. But, but if I eat real cheese, you mean like a cheddar, like an Irish cheddar? Right, or a New like Zealand a real cheddar, cheddar cheese that you buy in yeah. a block rather than in a packet. Yeah, yeah. Um, that gives me a migraine. Yeah. And that's supposed to give everybody. Uh, I've spoken to so many people over the years that don't realize chocolate, orange juice, and cheese could, if they stopped eating that, as well as gluten, they wouldn't get migraines. Yeah, it makes a big difference. It makes a That's why I don't difference. understand why I suddenly started having the ocular migraines. Did you find out what was going on with those? They found nothing wrong with my eyes. He said there's absolutely nothing wrong. He put me through every test. The only test I haven't had, and I don't even know if you can do it with your eyes, is an MRI. Yeah. But since I had all the tests, strangely enough, I haven't had an ocular migraine. And that's four weeks ago. What? And then I was getting one after, well, you know, one after Well, you another. can get cluster migraines. It sounds like you uh, had cl cluster migraines. No, they were only in my eye. Oh. Ocular migraines. Huh. Only in my eye, nothing in my head. Nothing really? at all. Nothing. When, I, when I used to get migraines, I would always feel they're always in my right eye. And I would always feel like I could just, I would dig my, my, my fingernails above my eyeball, trying to, you know, stop the pain. That no, when I used to get manifest. migraines, it used to be on the left side of my head. Yeah. But ocular migraines make you blind. I mean, you can't see. You literally, yeah. when you get one in your eye... I can't see. I have yeah. to cancel everything. Yeah. But I haven't had one since they did all the testing. So no. Well, that's good. They must have rattled some stuff around. I have no. <laughs> I don't know. All I know is I haven't had one. Thank that's good. God. Thank God. Well, that's good news. That's really good news. But I don't I think do that. that people who are migraine sufferers realize that there are trigger foods like that. Of course they don't because their doctors don't tell them. Their doctors just give them prescriptions. And I mean, I confess, I, I have a prescription for furanol. That's like the old, you know, mm -hmm. the, the old school, but I have it just in case I ever get a migraine, which happens maybe a couple of times a year. I used to get one every month. But um, yeah, no, they're not going to tell you that. Why would they tell you that when you can just stop eating, stop drinking orange juice or, or, or you know, eating cheese when they can... You know, big pharma can make money on whatever it is. I mean, I and some of those migraine medications cause heart murmurs too. Oh, mine's terrible. If I have to take it, I can only take a half. Yeah. Because if I take any more than that, I can't even a half a pill. I can't put my hands under warm water for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. I can't do anything with heat at all. Yeah. But I'm not every, even, I, I every, don't even bother to change it because I don't. Yeah, know. every drug, I don't, I, there's no drug that doesn't have a side effect. So we just have to be Well, they tell you them. that when they when they promote them on the television. You I can know. get this and you can get this and you can get this. You may die. <laughs> you know, you may have a heart attack. This is going to cause cancer. Yay. Anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt Crazy. what you no, were no, saying. No, 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 no. That's what this is for. This is just open. This is open season. So thank you for asking and contributing and all that. Um, Sue, anything else that we can talk about or dissect or dig because, into? Yeah, going back to the fruit then, is blending fruit in a smoothie not a good idea? <laughs> um, well- Like is that it, something it shouldn't it, do or? It's, it's more juicing. If you're blending, if okay. you're dumping blueberries and raspberries or yeah. something like that in there, it's all in there. It's when you juice yeah. and you've just got the juice. That's the straight sugar. Um, oh, okay. That's why I'm not a fan of juicers. 
because you're taking out a lot of the good stuff. You're taking out the pulp and the fiber and you, you lose some of the vitamins and minerals when you do that too. So no, if, if you're just dumping it in there, I think you're, I think you're okay. Oh, okay. Just don't run okay. it through a juicer and throw away the good stuff. No, don't, even, just, don't even have one. <laughs> yeah, good, 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 good. Yeah. And then I was watching a video the other day or you were talking about drinking water. Yes. And I think, I don't know whether I misunderstood or just didn't hear it. Are you just saying that you only need to have like a little bit of water a day instead of like this hundred and something ounces people recommend? No, no. I, I, I tell people to go with the eight ounces, uh, eight glasses of water a day, just as kind oh, of a glasses. general rule. Okay. Eight glasses of water a day. I think what you're referring to is um, we were talking about um, eating water, drink, eating water, drinking water with your meals. And it's kind of fallen out of favor. First of all, cold, ice cold water has kind of fallen out of favor. And they've gone more toward recommending room temperature or warm water. And you can drink water before a meal. In fact, if, you, if you're trying to cut down your appetite, if you drink a glass of water before your meal and then you eat, that can help you feel fuller. And the theory is that that may help you control how much you're eating at a meal. Now, they're saying, they're advising now that you don't drink while you're eating. If you have to have a little sip, but not a lot of water. And the reason is because uh, the water tends to dilute the stomach acids that are working so hard to digest what you're eating. So if you can keep eating, uh, drinking um, room temperature water or warm water during your meal to a minimum or not at all, and then you can have some uh, some water after your meal too. And that's not to say, you know, you're going to start to choke. So you, are you going to have a drink? Of course, you're no. going to drink some water. But um, before and after and just little sips if you must during because it does dilute the stomach acids. So that that's kind of something that they've been talking about recently. Really? It's always changing. It's it's never static. It's always that's changing. It's really interesting because here when you go to a restaurant, they fill your glass up with ice. Yep. I don't fill my glass up with ice because I ask for no ice. Yep. But that's beside the point. And so people think that if they don't have ice in the water, oh my, they haven't got the right kind of water. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> when I go to a restaurant, if I think it's going to come out, it, it has to be filtered water because I won't. Uh, LA water is disgusting. I mean, you can actually smell the chlorine. Yeah. It's really, really bad. That's not so, good for you. Right. So unless filtered water, I would rather have bottled water. Yeah. But um, if I do have ice, I tell them only one piece of ice. Yeah. Do not put more in it because I will send it back. Yeah. Yeah. Or I have no ice. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. And I've become a big fan of drinking hot water in the morning. Um, I have a cup of decaffeinated coffee and then I have warm water or hot water. And I've gotten so that I actually like it. I had to get off caffeine last year because it was giving me tachycardia. I, my heart was racing like crazy. Hazel, I think you and I have talked about this a couple mm -hmm. of times. And um, yeah, so as soon as I started backing off the caffeine, the old ticker started behaving. So I just have to watch it. But but the hot water, I can't believe how much I enjoy it. Sometimes I'll just put on the kettle and have a cup of hot water. It's, it's nuts so, but I like it. It's comforting and it's warming. Um, just proves you can get used to anything if you believe that it's good for you. And that's your mission to keep yourself They're healthy and improved. You don't? You don't like it? I don't mind non-refrigerated water. Yeah, room temperature. Right, room temperature, because yeah. that's how you say it here. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you know, I do come from a country where they don't put ice in everything. Yeah, and that's smart. I mean, we're finding, we're, we're discovering that that's the way it should be. We have to screw everything up and then we figure out that what was done before was a good thing. I don't well, know. Well, they eat a lot of sugar too, but they don't have a weight problem. In in England? They don't, they do not have an obesity problem there. 
not like we do here. Oh, God, no. You can almost well, tell people that are Americans when you go to Europe. Yeah. Oh, you can. You can always tell for so many mm -hmm. reasons, unfortunately. Um, but it's not, it's not just the sugar, it's the artificial sweeteners too, because um, they're in everything and they're in things that people are specifically eating because they're trying to lose weight or trying to manage their weight. And what they don't realize is the artificial sweeteners are perceived as being 200 to six or 700. I think saccharin is actually, can actually be up to 700 times sweeter than table sugar as perceived by your body. And it doesn't have to be digested. Saccharin and aspartame don't have to be digested. So they go straight to your liver and straight to fat cells. And artificial sweeteners are not a good idea for a number of reasons. First of all, they can trigger, a couple of servings can trigger a bout of depression if you tend to be depressive. Artificial sweeteners can also increase your appetite. So you can be hungrier because you're eating stuff with artificial sweeteners, trying to lose weight. It's so diabolical and they know this, but they're just not telling anybody. And then there was one other thing that they do that I wanted to share with you. Um, um, um. Oh yeah, artificial sweeteners make us put weight on in our middle. That's what they're, they're finding. So this spare tire, this belly fat thing is largely driven by artificial sweeteners for so many people, for so many people. And the incidence of being overweight and obese in, in this country, it's more than uh, two thirds now. And the incidence of diabetes between 2019, I'm trying to remember my facts here to see how sharp I am today. 2019 and 2020, the incidence of diabetes, 3 million more people in the US had diabetes in 2020 than in 2019. It's- Was that when COVID started? 2019, uh, COVID started, no, probably not because it was, it's COVID started really in March of 2020. So this was kind of 2019 into 2020, but not then it wasn't into the COVID-15 and all this stuff that people said that they were gaining all the weight because they couldn't get out and do stuff and things. Um, no, this has been happening for a while and, and big food knows it, processed food companies know it, but you have to, it's so important to understand that this is this whole food thing, big food, big pharma, uh, medicine, the Food and Drug Administration, the Food Pyramid, which is a bunch of hooey. Um, it's it's just it's it's not it's not designed to protect us. It's designed for their bottom line. It's a huge machine because once you once you start to gain weight because you don't realize that what you're eating is putting the weight on you, or how you're eating, what your eating patterns are putting the weight on you. Then you start buying the diet foods and the diet plans. The diet industry is a $33 billion a year industry, $33 billion a year industry. So you try that. And then you start to, you know, your sugar goes up. So they put you on metformin or you're, you get mal metabolic syndrome and, and, and your, your blood pressure is up. So they put you on the blood pressure meds. So big pharma starts profiting, the hospitals start profiting, the insurance companies are making millions and it's about their bottom line, not our bottoms, frankly. So we have to take control. We have to say, no, not doing this. And sometimes it's hard. And I admit sometimes it's hard and, and I'm not perfect and I've given up trying to be perfect. I mean, I tried to be perfect for so long for so many reasons <laughs> and it just didn't work. It Fine. sucks. Yeah, it <laughs> so <clears throat> so you, just, you have to give yourself some leeway in this. You, you do the best you can and when you have a misstep, you, for, you acknowledge it, you forgive yourself, tomorrow's a new day. You can't beat yourself up because that that will reinforce the behavior that you want to back off, that you want to lose. So be kind to yourself. Cut yourself a little snack, a little slack, and have a snack. No, <laughs> cut yourself a little slack. <laughs> slack. I can talk. You know, you you can you can you can. 
be good most of the time. You can lose the weight, you can get healthier. And once in a while you can have the fried clams or the ice cream cone or the pizza or the birthday cake. And it's okay, but you just, that, what we have to learn is that that's the exception rather than how we eat on a daily basis. And that's the trick because they're not there teaching us this. They're not there supporting us in doing this. So we have to find our own little communities that we can cheer each other on and we can take steps to create our own healthy eating lifestyle because that's what it's about. And I know everybody I come in contact, I say to them, I know you can do this. I know you can do this. We can all do this. It's easier, I think, if we have a community that we can kind of get together and have interaction and, you know, you know, run things by each other and get feedback and, and get help and support because um, we're going to be a lot healthier for a lot longer. And, and I mean, we're all going to age, but let's stay young as long as we possibly can and push it, you know, push the bad stuff to the very end. You know, that's what called the, me old last week. I hope you kicked them. <laughs> <laughs> I and I said, you can think of yourself as old. I'm yeah. not old. Good for you. I, I say to people, someday you may be able to call me an elderly. You may be able to call me an elder, but you will never call me elderly. Ever. Old? <laughs> yeah. Yep. I intend to live until I'm well over 100. There you go. Providing I have my mind and my body. Yep. I don't want to be crippled by and arthritis. Warehouse. I yep. don't want to be in a wheelchair. Yep. I really don't. Yeah. But I don't see myself being like that. No. And it, you can tell people whatever you want to tell them. Unfortunately, they have to believe it. I know. Because, you know, that's one of the things I've, I've been working on with clients with hypnotherapy is weight control. Mm. Not food. I don't tell them what to eat, but I help them to change the way they're thinking so that they believe in themselves and they believe that they can actually do it. Yep. And it's working very well for yep. people. So... So much of this whole healthy thing is an inside job. So of much of it is an inside job. Everything. Is, yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Doesn't matter what it is. It's yeah. all coming from your subconscious. Yeah. It's just that people don't understand enough of how the subconscious works. Yeah. So, you know. It's something I've been teaching for years. Obviously, I've been doing this for 30 years, so it's not a new thing for me, but... Um, it is for so many people. It is for so You'd many be people. surprised how many people. Yeah. Oh, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> you know, I and, learn every day. I learn every day. You know, the, the mindset, if you don't have the right mindset, forget it. Whatever yeah. you're doing, if you don't have the right mindset. That's right. Agreed. So... So... As we wrap up today, anything else? Are we we good for this edition of Ask Charlie? It's good to see you, Sue. You know, I haven't seen you since we did accountability count partners together. Yes, well, that's, that's cool. a long time ago. Yes, my goodness. And that's yeah, years that was a long time and ago. years ago. Oh, how nice! Well, I had my old my old business, I think, too. Like, <laughs> I didn't even realize you two knew each other. That's wonderful. Well, well, I hadn't realized time ago. either until I saw her picture. Oh, funny. <coughs> well, we can we can reconvene in two weeks because I'm doing these calls every two weeks. So I hope to see you both then. <coughs> okay. I guess we'll, we'll wrap up for now. This is Cheryl A. Major, and this has been Ask Cheryl Anything. And I will see you next time. Thanks so much. Thanks, Bye -bye. Cheryl. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for coming, Hazel. Sue. Bye-bye.